All right, this is YouTube host setup one, and my camera looks crooked. This light is loud. That microphone probably isn't close enough to me. Maybe I can mount it up. If I turn my head like this, if I turn my head like this, how does that sound? Good? Let's get into it. It's January 6th, 2023, and today is the start of my photo project for the year. The project is to shoot 52 rolls of color film across Arizona this year, at least one roll per week. I can shoot more than that, but I have to at least shoot one roll. I'm also planning on developing the film myself using my Patterson tank. I chose the RB67 for a couple of reasons. One, I really like mechanical things. And I feel like the camera should last the entire year. So this is a document of the journey. I'll be traveling across the state and I will be trying my best to push myself, hopefully stepping up my game as a photographer and having something cool to show for it. At the end of the year, I hope to have a photo book or at least a zine that's a starting place for a photo book of my portrait of Arizona. The thinking behind this is that I've lived in Arizona most of my life, in Tucson and in Phoenix, and it is one of the most photographed places in the entire country, and for good reason. There's beauty and inspiration everywhere. I think looking a little bit deeper and asking, how can I photograph a place that's been photographed millions of times and make it look a little different, or at least make it my own? I think that should help me really stretch my legs and find my voice. So that's it. I don't know how this is gonna go, and I invite you to come along with me. I developed two roles before I actually shot my first official roll of the year, two test rolls, if you will. One of them was Fuji 400H, and that came out a little thin. The negatives weren't super dense, and I felt like I knew what the problem was. I probably just started my timer a little late and didn't go the full like three and a half minutes. I went maybe like three minutes and 15 seconds. So my second roll was 400D, I loved the way that 400D looked, so I was feeling really confident I was gonna get reasonably good results. Well, when I got back and I developed my rolls on Monday, when I went to remove the tape at the end of the roll and put it into my reel, instead of actually removing all of the tape, it, it sort of like cut it in half, right? So like the part that was attached to the paper came off, but the part that was attached to the roll remained. I noticed this obviously when I pulled it out of the developer, I knew that my roll right then and there was not gonna be like printable. I, I knew there would probably be some color issues, maybe some density issues, but I decided to scan them anyway, because I was still pretty anxious to see if like my exposure and, and the compositions looked good. Well, they didn't. <laughs> so let's take a look frame by frame. Shot number one. So the first one that I made was this sort of hut. I just kind of wanted to break the ice and get the first shot off. I think that the biggest problem with this image was that I didn't get the exposure right. The bricks are really hot. It's not really interesting to look at, even though it's in late afternoon light, it's just very flat without any clouds in the sky to balance out the hut. I feel like the image you know, isn't gonna go past this video. You can probably see as we look through the images that there are some color cast issues in the sky. So I'm thinking that that is related to the tape being in the chemistry. The next frame that I made, I, I sort of hiked up a little bit higher in elevation and I was trying to get a wall of Saguaro's. I think I did accomplish that in this image. I sort of made this Saguaro in the bottom left that's casting a shadow, the anchor part of the frame. And you know, I get it. I get what I was trying to do. I'll give myself a pat on the back, you know, a, a solid C minus for effort because I wanted to show like the magnitude of the density of the Saguaros in this, in this particular part of Southern Arizona. But once again, the image is really flat. 
this image right here, I find, I think it might be a, a bit interesting if I were to put it in a photo book next to an image that I took the, the following day. And, and I'll put them up side by side when the time comes. But this image of uh, the saguaro and then this other desert plant, to me, I saw it and I thought like, well, you know, maybe I'll take a portrait of the saguaro. It reminded me of like a person with their instrument or a tool, like a big violin, and like they were reaching out to play it. Flipping a page in a book, potentially, this image could end up being uh, a good complement to another image. Standing alone, um, I'll have to think about it more. I'll have to think about it more if this image has any value to it. You know, pursuing interesting ideas is worth it. It's worth it to get out there and try something new. Um, I definitely felt a lot more excited about it in the moment than I did when I actually saw the scan. This next image I shot twice, and this one was what I was imagining, like, oh, if I was gonna print an image, it was gonna be this image. I avoided the base of the Saguaro because I didn't really want to show the busyness of the ground. Um, the base of the desert, to me, is not very interesting looking. Up close, all this little bush, these dried plants, I don't consider beautiful. And I was trying to find a beautiful swarrow. I was trying to find a subject where you saw like the beauty of the desert. And I think I overthought it a little bit. And you know, I get what I was trying to do. I guess I accomplished what I was trying to accomplish, but um, I still don't think that I have like my photo of a saguaro. So I will have to capture that later on this year. The next image that I made, I think pairs okay with the saguaro and the mountainside image. The, the same mountain is in the background and the same valley is in the background. I kind of wanted to express what it's like to be a desert dweller and to drive in the desert in the middle of sunset. I think that putting a vehicle in the frame was the right idea. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough exposure to have it sharp. And I sort of wish that I would have either committed to a sharp image or committed to an image where the vehicle is creating motion in the frame, a longer exposure where the headlights would trail in the exposure a little bit longer. It's probably one of my favorite images of the weekend, um, even though it has its flaws. The instinct behind it, I think was good. I just could have executed it better. So I moved on to downtown Tucson and uh, I found myself in the barrio. And the barrio is a really cool area. It's got uh, wonderful old buildings, super colorful. It has a mixture of sort of like these unupdated houses and these new modern stuccoed, refinished, super colorful dwellings. And I decided to make this frame right here. I don't know if I would say that I love it. I took this particular frame because I, I like that this door was like slightly open and it was creating an interesting shape. In sequencing this project, eventually I wanted sort of more intimate images and more grand images. And uh, back to back, I do enjoy that there's a variety of images, that it's not all big open sky and rock and saguaro. I just think I need to keep practicing this particular type of shot. One of the, the images that I do like the most, probably my favorite image, is this image of a, a lady named Peggy. She and a group of people were out there doing sketches of the barrio, and um, it's something that they do on a regular basis. They actually have a club, and it is a like a defining neighborhood of Tucson, and it's a very special place. So I got to chatting with her for a little bit. She was really nice, and she allowed me to make this image of her. This image, well, you know what I like about it is that I made myself talk to somebody and ask for their picture, which I know is not always that easy to do. Um, I certainly had to take my time. I circled the block a little bit, working up the courage to actually go and, and make this image of her because I was interrupting what she was doing. I, I do like the way the harsh light was rendered on her. Well, there's not a lot of color cast issues like there are in some of my nature photos. I think that she looks proud of her work, and I like that I'm balancing the nature side of Arizona with the people side, which is something that I really want represented in this project. I do think that this frame of Peggy next to the saguaro makes a nice pairing because they do sort of play off of each other. Maybe it's a little too on the nose, 
But if I were to be creating a photo book, I would probably place those two images next to each other, at least to evaluate how effective they are. And finally, I made this image of two windows. I thought that it was interesting that there was like these open windows uh, with the chilies hanging next to them. It felt very Southwest, it felt very Tucson, and it felt like it was a good complement to the other images I was making. I don't know if I love it. Um, I do feel like I would have shot this a little wider if I could go back and do it again. You know, I'm thinking through what is it like to make a series of 10 images at a place. How do I take these more close-up images and these people images and these landscape images and work them together so you're actually getting a portrait of Arizona everywhere I go. That's the role that I made. I did take the saguaro and mountain exposure twice and I took the saguaro and desert plant together twice. So I actually only ended up with eight frames. Overall, I think it's okay that I don't like any of them very much. I think it's okay that I messed up the development because I'm still learning and growing. At the very least, it's an exercise in persevering. Even when you don't like your work, I think it's important to finish what you started. And I think it'll be interesting to compare where I am a few months down the line or even next year compared to these images. So I will see you all for the next roll. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.